What's up, High Tide Heathens? I'm Quackers Co., and this is the fish fry for December 5th, being held at Marooner's Bay. Our cookware for this rotation is the sploosh matic the Big Swig Roller, the Ballpoint Splatling, and the Goo Tuber. Marooner's Bay can be one of the most dangerous maps in the game, and that's mainly because of how the salmon is responding and how we're supposed to get around on this map. There are some ways that you can make Marooner's Bay an easier map to play on. Of course there's the obvious things, like painting the walls on the aft section of the boat, or raising up the elevators and painting them before the wave starts. One other way you can make Marooner's Bay an easier map is to completely utilize the egg throwing mechanic. You can throw eggs in from the docks and the beach, but the amount of time and positioning it takes for you to get there may cause you to get blindsided and knocked into the water. But there's so many different areas that we could throw eggs to by the basket, so try to use your time and your ink as efficiently as possible on this map. As soon as you see those golden eggs, they need to be moving like a steady wave towards the basket. And like normal egg running, it's better to run too, because by the time you get to that third one, you might find yourself getting overran, or just not in the right spot to deal some damage. So make sure you get yourself at least up to the middle of the ship, that way you can see what's happening and where everything is spawning. And if you're climbing on those elevators, trying to get up to the middle of the ship, you have some pretty cool options on them. If the elevators are moving up at a pretty high speed, if you time your jump just right, you will get some extra momentum upwards, giving you a bigger jump. You can also wall jump off the elevator by the docks in order to get onto the grates. And one useful thing that's easy to forget is squid surging on those elevators as they're going down. Remember, as they're going down, that's more height that you're going up on them. It'll give you just a little bit of an extra chance to get onto that elevator, if it's not painted all the way up. And if you find yourself all the way at the aft end of the ship, remember that you can paint the back of those walls. So try to keep an eye on what's spawning around you, that way you can quickly get out of there, leaving yourself without getting splat, and being able to put more damage on this map. Our composition for this rotation also has the ballpoint and the goo tuber, which are going to have a little bit lower mobility. So the sploosh and the big swig should do an extra job on painting and egg running. The gameplay does change up on a high tide if you want the best success. With how tight it is, you're going to want to make sure that stuff doesn't get too close to the basket. And since everything's spawning at the end of the ship, we will have to get our way all the way over there to take out those bosses. And you don't want them to get too close to the basket. You usually want to take everything out before it gets to the grates. Which leaves a big problem of having all those eggs near the aft end of the ship. But luckily the snatchers on a high tide spawn from the front of the ship. So as long as you can be aware enough to make sure that you don't miss out on a snatcher, it'll bring all those eggs right to you, making it a little bit easier to reach quota. And then gameplay really changes up whenever we get to a low tide. Since low tide on Marooner's Bay is also tight, but we happen to have a ring sandbar. Whenever we have a ring on low tide, our high mobility weapon can easily move around that ring both to lure steel eels away from the basket for a moment and to push forward towards stingers and flyfish. That peninsula sandbar on the right side is very similar to the sandbars on spawning grounds low tide. So remember to use that goo tuber's piercing damage. And try to focus on steelheads. The sploosh's range is pretty short making it difficult and that big swig's damage output is just low enough that they're going to have some problems. One other thing to note about Marooner's Bay is how dangerous fish sticks and steel eels can become. Some of the fish stick placement on Marooner's Bay is just as detrimental to our mobility as sockeye stations. No matter what tide it's on, make sure you take out those fish sticks or else you're not going to be able to move around this map. The fish sticks also create perfect perches in order to put that ball point or the goo tuber on and just start to lay waste or take out some steel eels before they get too close to the basket. It's easy to lure here on low tide, but it's also really easy to over lure. And if things get so tight but you happen to have that quota egg, remember that you can throw an egg from the front of the ship into the low tide basket. Marooner's Bay can be a really difficult map, but it does have one thing that makes it a little bit easier, and that's during a Glowfly's occurrence. We have a perfect spot for it. At the beginning of the right Great Bridge, if you stand there, it'll funnel all the enemies into one lane, making it easier for that Goo Tuber to lay waste with its piercing shot. Remember to wait until the Salmonids are as close as possible, that way you can utilize the range of the Goo Tuber. But the splash matic and the Big Swig could do a fantastic job holding the damage line, making it easy to run eggs in. Unfortunately, during a Grillo's occurrence, things become a little bit more difficult. Our spot isn't as good as the Goldie's spot, but it can still work pretty well. If you stand on the middle platform, right past the Great Bridges, and lure the Grillers into that lower area right in front of it, that gives a perfect spot for all of our weapons to start dealing that damage, but that Big Swig Roller really needs to be on Small Fry Control. The Sploosh can be on Small Fry Control, but you really want that damage output to be focused onto the Griller. During a fog on Marooner's Bay, always make sure that you lure those Goldies to the basket. You can take them out before the Great Bridge, but whenever you do, make sure you don't spend too much time on throwing eggs and getting your ink back. Toss a couple eggs, run that next one in, and see what's happening. 
you can always be causing some kind of damage output while you're running eggs. During a Quahog charge, things can become easier. With how small this map is, as long as the turret users are being pretty efficient on what they're using their shots on, it's easy to keep this map pretty clear. Just don't forget about that turret at the front of the ship, just in case things get a little bit too overrun. That turret can reach anything pretty quickly, so help your teammates out by clearing out the basket area. During a mothership wave, don't forget to use the fling of the big swig in order to reach some of those Chinooks. Since that sploosh matic has such a short range, don't forget to be on box control and be running those eggs as quick as possible. Remember you don't need to run them all the way to the basket, toss them close to a teammate and they'll get the point. During a mudmouth wave, try to focus on what lessers are spawning and if your weapon is good against them. If your weapon is a bad match for the lesser, try to make sure you're the one throwing the bombs. Also be very careful on a mudmouth wave about going over those valve locations. At any moment, a mudmouth could spawn in that location, send you flying into the water, or immediately splatting you. During a giant tornado, things can become pretty fun. Depending on which side the chest spawns on, you have some pretty cool throwing options. If the chest is on the port side of the ship, you can toss eggs from the second throwing spot directly onto the front of the ship. You don't even need to worry about throwing them onto the elevator. If the chest spawns on the starboard side of the ship, you have a quick spot right there to toss the eggs straight into the basket. On a Goldie Seek, I still haven't had a chance to test if the Big Swig will bounce the Goldie, but it wouldn't hurt to give it a try and try to block his path. The sploosh matic can do a fantastic job on dealing with lessers or knocking eggs out of the goldie, and one thing you need to keep in mind are how many valves there are at the aft end of the ship. So try to play a goldie seek smart and start with the valves on the outside furthest away locations from the basket. Marooner's Bay is a very tight map, but as long as we keep tossing those eggs in a steady wave towards the basket, or on a high tide using snatchers in order to bring the eggs closer to us, we should find some success on this very, very difficult stage. Alright, let's get into the cookware. Our first cooking utensil is the sploosh matic The sploosh matic has a very close range, however, it has some incredible mobility with it. So speed your way at the beginning of the wave over to the end of the walls and start painting them. Whatever you're fighting against, you'll have to get right up to with its range. So as long as this map is painted and you have those mobility options, it's easy to get in, take something out, and then start moving those eggs towards the basket. The sploosh and the ballpoint will be the best on taking out stingers, but the sploosh matic has better mobility than the ballpoint, so make sure you get that sploosh in there and take those stingers out. The sploosh matic has the highest DPS in the game, so make sure you utilize that in taking out bosses and lessers. Our second cooking utensil is the Big Swig Roller. The Big Swig Roller does an incredible job at painting turf, but there isn't that much turf here at Marooner's Bay. So one of the best things that you can do with the big swig is to use it to paint the elevators right at the beginning of the wave. Use one flick to activate that elevator and then roll right off the side, painting the side of it. The big swig's damage output can be low if you focus on one target. Remember how wide this weapon flicks. It's easy to cause some quick damage on a large amount of enemies and then use the roller to bounce them a little bit further back and then using another flick to take them out. Try to not get too much tunnel vision on one specific target. This big swig can be causing so much damage at all times during a wave. You'll have to play to this weapon's strengths since its damage output is so low. There are a couple bosses though that the big swig can do a fantastic job against, like filling in flipper flopper splat zones and using the range of the fling in order to climb a fish stick and take it out with just a couple flicks. And also remember to use the big swig's turf coverage in the midst of waves. It can easily clear up a bunch of enemy ink giving you a lot more movement options. Our third cooking utensil is the Ballpoint Splatling. With the first two tools of this composition, needing to get so close to some of these enemies, make sure you keep the Ballpoint in a more defensive, supportive position. Utilize that extended range of a full charge in order to support your teammates and to take out something before it gets too close to them. You'll also want to keep yourself topped off on ink as much as possible. In these supportive positions, it's really easy to break away from combat in order to injure a fly fish, or to lure a moz or a scrapper to the basket, giving yourself some easy eggs. When things start getting a little bit too close to you, remember to use half charges so you can use the faster fire rate of the ballpoint. And you don't need to dip into the ink with the ballpoint in order to charge it back up. So as soon as the weapon starts going into its long range mode, hold that trigger again to gain access to the faster fire rate mode. 
The ball point is also going to be the easiest weapon to take out fish sticks from the ground level. Our last cooking utensil is the goo tuber. A full charge goo tuber shot isn't enough to take out a cohawk, but with the big swig and the splushomatic in the composition, it doesn't hurt to keep taking that full charge to each one of those cohawks. That way the sploosh and the big swig can take them out really easily. The goo tuber's range also isn't that good, but here on Marooner's Bay, everything is just so narrow that we should be able to reach a lot of our targets. A lot of these weapons are going to have some problems taking out steelheads, so try to keep yourself on steelhead control too. And just like the ballpoint splatling, the goo tuber should play a little bit more defensively. If you see your teammates going into the shoreline to take out a boss, try to support them in their tasks. It's also very helpful to paint the size of fish sticks, that way the sploosh matic player doesn't have to worry about charging up a squid surge. And try not to get too far onto the shoreline if you want to take out a stinger. One helpful thing you can do if they're on the beach is to activate the elevator and try to take them out while the elevator is moving and then try to activate the elevator before it gets to the ground floor. Quarter charge shots on chargers do a better job at taking out stinger pots than just frantically pulling the trigger. During an extra wave, the sploosh matic has the highest DPS and some incredible mobility. Try to glue yourself onto that Kohozuna and lure him there into the middle of the map. If the sploosh matic player is doing this, all the other players will have to be really focused on controlling lessers and taking out bosses. It wouldn't hurt for that ball point or the GooTuber player to cause some damage to that Kohozuna as well, and that big swig player needs to be focusing on dealing as much damage to lessers as possible. And remember to look for that moment right at the beginning of the extra wave, where you can use your special to not just cause some damage to the Kohozuna, but to also take out some bosses, spawning some golden eggs early on in the wave. And the fish fry usually comes out before the stage rotation, so if you want to catch these updates when they're hot and fresh, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell. And if you want other fellow Grizzco employees to receive these tips, make sure you like and share the video. Bye bye To give the fish fry an algorithm boost, just comment what your favorite or least favorite weapon is of this composition. I'll have to give my vote to the sploosh matic That thing, like I said, has the highest DPS in the game, and it is one of the best tools on splatting that King Salmonid. Alright guys, bye bye